He holds his head high with the pride of a king. He prances and sniffs the air for the scent of competition. His bugling call echoes a signal to any challenger. He is the master of his domain. He is the mighty bull elk. At one time, the sounds of elk spread throughout the United States and Canada. Large animals grazed the mountains and open plains with little fear. Native Americans called them wapiti. They relied on elk for everything from meat for food, hides for clothing, and bone and antler for weapons and tools. It's estimated more than 10 million elk lived in North America before Europeans arrived. Pioneers on the Oregon Trail hunted the animals for food and trade. But as humans spread across the United States and Canada, they plowed prairies for farms and turned grasslands into cities. Elk were pushed out. Some retreated to the mountains, but competition for space and food meant fewer elk could survive. By the early 1900s, the elk's bugle had become a faint echo. Today, scientists are learning how to keep elk herds healthy. Thanks to careful management and regulated hunting, elk populations are on the increase. Elk are members of the deer family, which includes white-tailed deer, mule deer, caribou, and the largest member of the family, the moose. Like its relatives, elk need food, water, shelter, and space. These elements make up what is called habitat. Longer days, warmer temperatures, and melting snow all signal the start of spring movement for many elk in the Rocky Mountain region. They will follow the melting snow to find newly exposed, fresh vegetation. This movement, called migration, will lead the elk up to the mountains to their summer habitat. Migration could take only a few days, or it may go on for several months. After a lean winter, when food was scarce, the elk have used up valuable body fat to survive. But it won't be long before they plump up again. During the bounty of summer, elk will eat as much as 15 pounds of grasses and plants each day, enough to quickly regain their fat reserves. Sometime between January and March, most male elk, called bulls, shed their antlers. Immediately, they begin to grow a new set. This is one of the main differences between antlered animals, like elk and deer, and animals with horns, like bighorn sheep and mountain goats. Horns continue to grow for the entire lifetime of the animal, never dropping off while antlers are shed and regrown every year. Horns and antlers differ in other ways, too. Horns are made of keratin, the same stuff that's in your fingernails. Antlers are made of bone. With few exceptions, antlers grow only on the male members of the species, like on this bull elk, while horns grow on both males and females. The size and weight of the antlers depend on nutrition and general health, as well as the age of the individual elk. A one-year-old bull usually grows slim, unbranched antlers called spikes. By the second year, antlers begin developing branches called tines or points. By his seventh year, a bull's antlers may have six points each and weigh as much as 40 pounds. In early summer, the female elk, called cows, are ready to give birth to their babies, called calves. The cows separate themselves from the herd and hide in trees or shrubs. The places where cows give birth are called calving grounds. A newborn calf weighs between 20 and 45 pounds. Its wobbly legs make it an easy target for predators, so the cow tries to hide the calf in dense underbrush. She will only go near her baby a few times a day to avoid leading predators to the hiding place. This behavior lasts for two or three weeks, until the calf is strong enough to outrun most predators. By July, cows and their new calves begin to regroup with the rest of the herd. The herd develops a nursery group, where a few cows take turns acting as babysitter. As many as 20 calves will follow the babysitter around as she watches for danger. 
This allows the rest of the mothers to graze about for nutritious food to produce milk for their young. Calves continue to nurse through the first couple of months of life, then gradually wean off their mothers. During the summer, bull and cow elk live separate lives. Cows and calves stay at lower elevations where grasses are more plentiful, while bulls favor the high country. But they all concentrate on fattening up to regain the body weight and fat reserves they lost in the winter months. This buildup is critical to survive the cold, harsh winter ahead. As summer fades away and days grow shorter, cooler temperatures arrive. The countryside blends in a beautiful spectrum of autumn colors. Fall has arrived and the breeding season, also known as the rut, begins. By September, a bull's antlers are fully grown and almost ready for the displays and battles to come. But first, the bull must remove the soft tissue that covers his antlers, a substance called velvet. The bulls thrash their antlers against brush and small sapling trees to strip away the velvet. During the process, the tips of the antlers are polished to shiny points, dangerous fighting weapons. Cows want to mate with the biggest, smartest, and hardiest bull, so their calf will have all the same traits. Bulls with the biggest antlers attract the largest groups of cows, called harems. When the rut begins, bulls begin to bugle. The sounds they make are among the more haunting and beautiful sounds in nature. The bugles advertise their presence and fitness to both females and other males. Bulls also bugle to announce or accept a challenge from another male. These two bulls are fighting over a harem of cows hiding in the surrounding forest. The rivals face each other, three to four yards apart. They pose and bugle. Then suddenly, one bull drops his head and moves on his opponent. The bulls engage in battle and a rapid and serious contest of strength follows. During the battle, each bull tries to protect itself from being gored. The battle will end when one of the bulls loses his balance or gives up and turns around as the winner chases him away. Fighting takes a tremendous toll on the big bulls. They come into the rutting season in excellent physical condition, following a long, plentiful summer. But during the rut, they burn an enormous amount of energy, chasing cows and warding off rivals. By the end of the breeding season, in late October, the bulls have used up much of their summer reserves and must concentrate on regaining that lost body condition before the first snowfall. It comes first to the high country, nature gently burying its dead. The brown withered leaves of fall gradually disappear under a cleansing layer of white. But the season's first delicate snowflakes disguise the harsh bite of the Rocky Mountain winter to come. The elk stand out as dark spots against a snowy white hillside, motionless in the bitter cold. You may feel sorry for them and imagine yourself in their place. But your body is not made to endure severe weather without protection. Your skin doesn't collect and contain heat like the thickened and insulated coats of elk. Your feet aren't constructed with hooves, natural buffers against the ice. And your body doesn't work in the same way, deliberately slowing its metabolic rate to conserve energy. But still, the feelings of compassion remain. And despite the fact that wildlife has survived winters without us for thousands of years, we want to help. Starvation is one of nature's laws, but a difficult one for man to accept. Some people feel we should help elk by setting up winter feeding areas. But in those efforts to help, we may do more damage than good. Artificially gathering large numbers of wild animals in a small area can be an invitation for disease. If one animal is sick, it can quickly pass to many other animals in the group. That's why the Idaho Department of Fish and Game recommends winter feeding only in an emergency situation, a time when a winter is so severe that an unusually high number of animals will die unless man steps in to help. Winter is a critical period. Elk can lose up to 15% of their body weight. They must paw through snow to find food. Shrubs and trees provide additional food. Although the effects of winter may seem severe, it is nature's time to weed out the weaker animals from the strong ones. This way, 
elk populations stay in balance with their habitat and ensure there's plenty of food, water, and space for all. Elk are incredible creatures to see in the wild. Whether you are a hunter, keen on spotting a big bull, or just a lover of wildlife. Watching the sheer beauty of these magnificent animals. They are mighty creatures, and most certainly as noble as kings.